Many people will tell you that cowboy coffee is the best tasting cup of coffee you can possibly make. But is that really true? Does it really live up to the claims they make for it? Well, if you're interested in finding out the truth, keep watching. You know, there is a lot of nostalgia around cowboy coffee. I think we believe it takes us back to what was a simpler time. But I think the real reason people are attracted to cowboy coffee is the simplicity. Really, no special equipment needed. All you need is a pot, coffee, water, and a heat source. But simple doesn't necessarily mean easy, and it doesn't necessarily mean good. So what I want to do with this video is share with you recipes from three recognized authorities on cowboy coffee. I'll give you one bonus recipe just for the fun of it, and then I'll share with you my recipe. All right, let's get started. So before I share those recipes with you, I want to take just a few moments to go over the principles of making a good cup of coffee. So to begin, it is all about quality. Regardless what you may have heard elsewhere, quality does matter. The better the quality of the coffee, the better the cup you will enjoy. Now, I have my favorite coffee, which I'll share with you. I'm not trying to change your mind. If you already have a favorite roast and a favorite a roaster, that's great. But what I use is the Rampage coffee. And Rampage coffee is roasted in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. And they are a mail order business, so they should be able to reach you with shipments. And I'll provide information where you can find out more about Rampage coffee in the video description below. Now, after quality of the coffee comes quantity of the coffee. How much coffee do you actually mix into your water? Well, most experts will say a good starting point is 60 grams of coffee for each liter of water. Now, depending on whether it's a light roast or dark roast, that could be five or six tablespoons for each liter of water. Now, that's the easiest way to do it. Now, you may decide that's too strong and that's fine, lighten it up. You may decide you like it stronger, add more. You can always do that as well. After the quantity of coffee comes the quality of the water. Here's where things get a little troubling or a little challenging in the woods. Um, usually you are dependent on whatever water source is available to you. Now the lakes in my area have a lot of tannins and naturally occurring tannins. Tannins usually add some bitterness to the coffee. Now I've gotten used to it and I've made some adjustments to my own recipe that will adapt to that. But if you're not liking the water source that you're going to be making your coffee from, you have a couple of choices, which of course is bring water with you to make coffee or filter the water that you have with some type of filter that will take out any flavors as well as any my microorganisms that you want to get out of the water as well. So what comes after water quality? Water temperature. Most experts will tell you that somewhere around 205 degrees Fahrenheit or 96 degrees Celsius is the ideal temperature for making coffee with. Um, okay, so here is the trick. Making coffee is all about a balance between under extraction and over extraction. Now, what I mean by that is how long the coffee sits in the water is going to determine the extraction. So if you just put coffee in for a very, the water and coffee together for a very short period of time, then you may end up with an under extracted cup of coffee. And that often tastes kind of acidity and weak. You'll know it, it's very pale looking and it doesn't taste very good. However, at the same time, if you leave the coffee in the water too long, then you may get over extraction. So it goes from acidic and pale and weak to bitter and strong and dark. Now, maybe you like that as well. So I'll leave that choice up to you. Most people say that depending on the method you're using for making your coffee, there is an ideal number or period of time for that extraction to get the best cup of coffee you can. Now, we're going to talk more about extraction times when it comes to the recipes I'm going to share with you now. There's also a few hacks that I'll share with you as we go along that people have suggested for making a cow cup of cowboy coffee taste better. All right, let's get on to recipe number one. So this first recipe for cowboy coffee comes from no less of an expert than cowboy Kent Rollins himself. And I'll be sure to put a link to his video on cowboy coffin, coffee in the video description below. Now, Kent Rollins suggests that any, any type of coffee at all will do, any grind, any roast, it doesn't matter, any brand. So he also says that you're going to use one quarter cup of coffee for each quart of water. And that roughly works out to about one tablespoon for each cup of water. So I want to just point that out because I'm going to try and equalize the amounts of coffee for each of the recipes I share. Now Kent Rollins further suggests what you do is you put your, your coffee into warm water, so it's 
already on the stove, getting warm, put it into the warm water, let it come to a rolling boil, and let it boil for four minutes before you take it off the heat. So that really is boiled coffee, and that is the most traditional way of making cowboy coffee. All right, let's go on to the next recipe. This next recipe comes from a man who I have a great deal of respect for, fellow Canadian, the late Moores Kahansky. Now, Moores refers to his coffee as bush coffee rather than cowboy coffee. And Moores' recipe, the amounts are also about one tablespoon for each cup of water that you're going to use. Moores also says that you can use any grind, any type of coffee. It doesn't matter because this process will make any coffee taste even better. So you can use the cheapest, grind the cheapest brand that you want. Now Moore's has more detail to his recipe and it starts with take your water whether it's a liter, quart or however much water, cold. It must be cold to start with. Take your coffee, pour it on top of the water. Don't pour it and don't stir it through but let it actually sit on top of the water. Hang that over your fire. Keep a close eye on it to, as it comes closer to a boil. If it starts to boil too quickly, raise it off of the heat just a little bit. But what you want to do is let the boiling action to actually do the mixing of the coffee. Leave the coffee on boil for one full minute and at exactly one minute, take it off of the heat. All right, this third recipe comes from no less of an expert than Ray Mears himself, well known in bushcraft circles around the world. Ray has a slightly different take on making this coffee to start with. He refers to it as camp coffee. Now, one of the things that Ray says is that grind does matter. He doesn't talk about the quality of the brand or the roast, but he says a coarse grind of coffee is better for making camp coffee than is any other grind. Now, Ray also advocates using the same pot for making coffee every time. Actually, Kent Rollins does as well. The idea is that the pot will take on a seasoning over time and that will enhance the flavor of the next pot of coffee. Be sure that you never wash it out with soap and water, but like cast iron, let it take on the flavors of each successive pot of coffee. All right, his method differs as well as does his recipe. His recipe advocates two tablespoons of coffee, coarsely ground, to each cup of water. His method is, is that you'll take your pot of water, put it over the fire, bring it to a boil. The moment it comes to a boil, put your coffee in and immediately take it off of the fire. He says you may have to stir it to make sure all the grounds are mixed through, but then let it stand for a period of time to allow the grounds to settle pour and enjoy. So I mentioned I have a bonus recipe I wanted to share with you. Well, this one is kind of fun. Um, you'll decide for yourself if it's something you want to do. It's called Swedish Kokaf. I'm likely not pronouncing that correctly. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that correctly. So feel free to correct me on that. Loosely interpreted, it means boiled coffee. And you'll, you'll understand why. So the method is different, the amounts are different. So to start with, it does usually involve a coarser ground of coffee. There's no mention of the types of roasts or anything else, but it should be fairly coarse. And how much coffee do you put in the water? A lot. In fact, you just pour coffee in until there's enough floating on top, and as the way they explain it, it should be enough to support a lemming running across the top of it. So that's that's kind of descriptive, isn't it? Now, the methodology is, is that you take your coffee in that pot, put it over your fire, bring it to a rolling boil, take it off of the fire, wait for the boil to settle down, put it back on, take it off, put it back on, take it off four or five times. And this will ensure that the coffee will mix through the water without boiling over the top, which can happen if you're not careful. And then of course you just wait and let the, the ground settle to the bottom. So that's kind of fun. All right, now that I've given you those, well, three plus one bonus recipes, what's my recipe? And let's make some. All right, before I share my recipe for making this style of coffee, I just wanna make sure you understand that this is not my favorite way to make coffee. I feel that there are much better ways of making coffee that'll make a much tastier cup of coffee, it'll be easier to do, and it's much easier to clean up. So what is my recipe? Actually, it's pretty much identical to what Ray Mears does. My idea or my recipe is that you'll use two tablespoons of coffee for each cup of water and I'll bring my water to a boil, 
I will take it off of the boil. I will put my coffee in. I'll stir it if I have to to make sure that it's mixed around. And then I'll just let it sit for five minutes. And that is usually enough time for the grounds to settle to the bottom. Now, when you think about it, that's very similar to what a French press style of coffee or how a French press style of coffee is made. The only difference is we don't have a press to ensure the grounds stay at the bottom. So when I go to pour my coffee, I have to be gentle enough not to stir the grounds up. But believe it or not, they will settle to the, to the bottom of the pot. Now, I wanted to share with you a few other tips and tricks on making cowboy coffee, camp coffee, bush coffee, whatever you want to call this, things that people have used over time to to improve the, the taste of the cup of coffee. Number one, well, let's talk about settling the grounds. Now, I just said that all I do is take it off of the water and or off of the boil and let the coffee settle on its own. And it does work. That's really all that is necessary. Really, if you just took your water off of the boil and you added the coffee, it's too hot to drink anyway. Now, I know people who can drink boiling hot coffee. I'm not one of them. In fact, I feel that it, even if I could uh, use that or drink coffee that hot, it probably wouldn't taste as, as good as it will in a few minutes time. So just let it set and the grounds will settle on their own. If you are in a rush to have that cup of coffee, you can force or help the ground settle to the bottom. There are a few tricks that people have talked about. Number one is to cold shock it. And what that means is just to pour cold water in over the top. You don't stir it, you just pour cold water in over the top and the, it will pull the grounds to the bottom of the pot. And yes, it does work. It's not necessary, but it does work. Another one is tapping on the side of the pot. You take a stick and the idea is that any coffee that was still suspended in the water will start to settle out from the tapping. Now, there is a couple of tricks that I'm not gonna demonstrate and uh, I'm not sure that you wanna try unless you're really brave. If you're gonna try this, do it with a pot of cold water before you do it with a full pot of hot water. One is called pumping where you will lower the coffee and your arm and you pull up and of course that force of pulling up pushes the, co the coffee to the bottom of the pot. The other one is called around the world and that is you'll take your pot of coffee, full pot of hot coffee, and windmill it right around. And the centrifugal force again pushes the coffee grounds to the bottom of the pot. And that's the one I'd say think before you do that one because one is first off it's not necessary. It may work but you may also be wearing all of that hot coffee, which would not be a good experience for sure. Okay, so what are some of the other tricks? Well, oftentimes you'll see people adding salt to their coffee. Now, why would they do that? Um, first off, there's a reason why they do it, and then I'll tell you how it works. It's because the coffee is bitter. Boiled coffee is bitter. That's just the plain truth of it. Now, maybe you like boiled coffee and the bitter flavor of it, and I'm not trying to change your mind, but I would like to open you up to the possibilities that there is another way of making coffee which may actually be tastier. And that now, what do they do with this? Is they add salt. Why do they add salt? Well, salt is kind of unique when it's added to things like coffee in that it fools your mouth, your tongue, the taste buds, into thinking it's sweet. Salt is not determined very clearly between uh, sugar and, uh, or, or sweetness and bitterness. So the salt actually tends to mask the bitterness in the coffee, making you think it's a little bit sweeter. And that's how that works. I've seen other recommendations like eggshell crush up some eggshells and put them in. Apparently the calcium in the eggshells is supposed to do something to uh, make the coffee be, uh, taste a little smoother. I've tried it. I don't notice any different. Now, this is different than adding an egg to boiled coffee, stirring it around, and having the egg bind with the coffee and drop to the bottom of the pot. That's another way of making coffee. We can cover another video. Or another video. It's quite involved. I don't know that it's necessary. It does make a different tasting cup of coffee, I'll admit that. But uh, yeah, so that's another way of doing it, eggshells. Uh, what else can you do to uh, improve the flavor of the coffee? Well, I mentioned that you could use a coarser grind of coffee. And a coarser grind, and I mean a really coarse grind of coffee, will resist some of the effects of heat and over extraction because if you're going to boil your coffee, which is essentially what cowboy coffee is, then you're applying a lot of heat, too much heat in fact, for a prolonged period of time. Coarser coffee will allow that that to be less bitter, but it's still going to be bitter to be quite honest, and I've tried this out. 
it's better to make your coffee in a taller pot than it is a wide pot. Now you can make your coffee in any pot whatsoever. You can make it in your kettles, you can, but if you notice that traditional coffee pots tend to be tall. And the reason is, is that when the coffee comes to a boil, it tends to want to rise up and overflow the top of the pot. This is why you have to be cautious about two things. Don't put so much water and coffee in the pot that it will rise up and flow over. And number two, Keep your eye on it so that if it does start to rise up to the top, you can take it off the heat and give it a chance to settle down. All right, now I've shared with you just about everything I know about cowboy coffee. Why don't I get a fire going and I make some? Mm, okay. Yep. All right, doing uh, trail coffee, bush coffee, cowboy coffee, camp coffee, whatever you want to call it, doing it the way I just showed, it comes out tasting a lot more like something you would do with a French press at home or in the woods. I've used French press in the woods as well. Um, letting it sit there for about five minutes allowed the grounds to settle on their own. I didn't have to shock it with cold water. I didn't have to tap it. I didn't have to do any other magic incantations or anything. It just settles on its own. And uh, there are no grounds in this coffee. Now, there is one small trick if you want. You can get these small filters. Um, I think GSI makes one. I'll Put a picture, I guess, on the screen just to show you. I have one at home. It was given to me a few years ago as a gift. Uh, uh, you know, it, they work. I don't find I use it very much, but if you are worried about grounds in your coffee, then put that in your cup first, let pour your coffee through, and that'll capture any grounds that are likely to come through. Now, the re reality is it doesn't matter which method you use, including mine, you're going to get some fines. Fines are the very powder-like grounds of coffee because they just stay suspended. Uh, you know what? That's not a bad thing in a cup of coffee like this. It's the same thing in a French press. Unless you use some type of a paper filter in there, you're going to get some fines in the coffee. Some people don't like that. I don't mind it because it actually adds mouthfeel, body, like texture. There's something there. It's more than just flavor. There's actually some texture. I think that's one of the things people do like about cowboy coffee. It says there's body to that. And, and they're right. There is. There is grounds floating in their coffee. Maybe not big ones they have to spit out, but small enough that it does add texture to the coffee. You know, this, I've, I've made cowboy coffee the Kent Rollins way, the Morris Kahansky way, the Ray Mears way, and mine is, as I mentioned, very close to Ray Mears. The only thing I do different really is I take it off of the heat before I put the coffee in the water. I let it set for about five minutes and it seems to hit just the right extraction point. Some people might say that, well, you didn't wait long enough to put the coffee in, the water is still too hot. That has more to do with the type of coffee than the temperature of the coffee. If you're using a lighter roast, heat is not as important. If you're using a darker roast, you can over extract quicker. Again, 
Uh, choose the roast that you like, experiment with it until you get it where you want it, and, uh, and then enjoy, right? Okay, I will admit this is simple. It's just so easy. I'm going to be using that pot for doing some cooking in in a few minutes time. It worked out just fine for making coffee. I didn't have to carry anything else with it. There's one more thing about making cowboy coffee that a lot of people don't talk about because I frankly, I don't know how much they thought they give to it. And that is cleaning the pot out. Now, yes, I know people, what are you talking about? Just rinse it out with water and throw the grounds anywhere. Okay. You can do that, I won't. And the reason I won't is because I have a good belief in the leave no trace principles. Those coffee grounds did not grow out here in the woods. They don't belong here in the woods. Now, I'll burn them. If I've got a fire going, I'll throw the grounds on the, on the fire and burn them up, but I won't throw them on the earth. Yes, they will compost. People tell me they'll, they're good for the earth. They'll compost. Yes, they will. But that doesn't mean that they belong out here in the wild. They're not a natural thing for the forest. They don't grow here. The wildlife doesn't expect them. The, the ecosystem doesn't expect them and doesn't appreciate them. So I like to clean my coffee out and take it home, quite honestly, unless I get an opportunity to throw it in the fire and burn it up, which I'll probably do with this batch. It just takes a little bit more work as well. You know, with something like a AeroPress, you, you just push the puck out into the fire, if that's what you want to do with it, or into a bag to go home with compost. Much simpler to me, and actually a much better cup of coffee. Okay, I don't expect that this video will change anybody's mind who is already a huge fan of cowboy coffee, and I'm not trying to. This video was for somebody who thinks that they may be able to make a better cup of coffee because they've tried cowboy coffee and they're not a fan, and but they still want the simplicity of making cowboy coffee, then this may be the video that helps you uh, come to the right to the decision on how to do that. It may be for people who's just looked at it and said, I'm not sure how to make a good cup of coffee. How does that whole cowboy coffee thing work? I'm hoping that the explanation I gave you will help you with that as well. Uh, truth is, I expect this video is going to annoy a few, more than a few of my viewers. People uh, like to take a very hard position on how coffee should be made. I understand that. It's very personal. Coffee is what you like and no one can really change your mind. And again, I'm not trying to. If you like making cowboy coffee by boiling hard over fire, keep doing it because if that's what makes you happy and you enjoy the flavor, then that's great. I don't, and I know a lot of other people don't. They don't like that bitter taste. Why else would they add salt if they find that it wasn't too bitter? Okay, I think that you might enjoy trying this way. Try it. It's just simple, except for the cleanup part, to be honest. It's simple to do, and I just made a cup of coffee that tastes every bit as good to me as a French press does. It's clean, there's no grounds in it. Nothing special about doing this. And I've got some more in the pot. I made about two cups with the four tablespoons of coffee. Oh, one more thing about the four tablespoons of coffee. If you think that's too much because the other experts are, are recommending one tablespoon, let me suggest this. One of the reasons why they can get away with one tablespoon is because they boil the coffee and over extract it. So they get, they're getting more out of that smaller amount of coffee. Doesn't necessarily mean it tastes better though. The other thing is if you put two tablespoons in and you find that that's too strong, add a little water. Easier to add a little water to thin it out a tiny bit than it is to try to make it too, or stronger after it's already been made. Okay, if you have comments, and I'm sure you do, please put them in the comments section below. If you have questions and I wasn't clear, if I haven't provided enough information, put that in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore, make some coffee, enjoy the wilderness, you'll, you'll know you'll enjoy it. Bye for now.